And now, a message from my sponsors. It's not really a sponsor because I'm not making money off of this. I just want to show you something fun. Introducing Movie Clichés Card Game. Created by Joshua Sauer, who is behind the Not Funny series. Some clichés are necessary, and others result in lazy screenwriting. That is why these cards are made. There are many ways to play the game. Cliché Bingo, Name the Movies, and Cliché Shop. But if you are a child or who is not a fan of alcohol drinks, it's best to drink soda, juice, tea, milk, and especially water. Support the project on Kickstarter so it can be successful. I know this game will be so fun. So much fun. Alright. Now that I said enough, let's start the intro of Pender. Hello viewers, it's Marie from Pinder. Welcome to another brief history. Since my Puka video received 10,000 views successfully, I've decided to make another one. I've never thought that video would be successful because of how small I am and my subscriptions barely watch my videos, except the people who didn't subscribe to me. But that's subsidiary. I am very grateful that the video had the praise it deserves. With all my blood, sweat, and tears, I decided to make this. Pender proudly presents, ooh, alliteration. The other puppet shows that Disney brought you bear in the big blue house. That is, Johnny and the Sprites. Where do I begin? This is another show I grew up with. I love the series so much with its remarkable colors, fantasy scenery, characters, and sprites, of course. Johnny and the Sprites is an American musical television show that aimed to younger audiences on Playhouse Disney, a network that was rebranded to Disney Junior. Johnny, a young composer who comes to live in his great uncle's house to work on his music, then he discovers the magical creatures called Sprites, who introduce him to their magical fantasy world. In return, Johnny conveys what it's like to be a human, teaching them lessons through songs, dancing, and entertainment for the sprites. Johnny is played and created by John Tartaglia. About John, you may know him from his most famous work on Avenue Q. You're a little bit racist. Well, you're a little bit too. I guess we're both a little bit racist. Admitting it is not an easy thing to do. But I guess it's true. Between me and you, I think everyone's, everyone's a little, little bit racist. Sometimes doesn't mean we go around committing hate crimes. Wow, that came from ABC. But he's also involved in Sesame Street years ago. Other two mains are Ginger, played by Leslie Carrara Rudolph, an air sprite with a courageous and determined jaunty attitude. Basil, played by Tim Lagasse, an intelligent earth sprite and knows the history of sprites, also gardening. What makes John created Johnny and the Sprites? Since Rich Ross the former president of Disney Channel from 2004 to 2009, he asked John if he wanted to make a show for Playhouse Disney. Then John accepts because he is a Disney fan. I am a huge Disney fan. I mean, I went to the, I go to the theme parks like seven times a year. I mean, I'm, I'm a, a Disney boy. I that. totally am. All right, a couple more times. Disney <laughs> all right, so I am. But I, so I, I, I was first of all excited because it was the president of the Disney Channel, mm -hmm. and he said, um, "I really love your work." And he said, "You know, basically, uh, would you create a show for me?" And I just my jaw kind of hit the floor because I worked on Sesame Street for eleven years, and you as know, a puppeteer. Then Johnny and the Sprites was created. It began on October 9th, 2005. Johnny and the Sprites aired on Disney Channel, indicating the shorts in one day. That's crazy, right? Each short were five minutes in the Playhouse Disney programming block. Eventually, Johnny and the Sprites was getting massive amounts of positive feedback by critics and the audience. The show renewed to a 20 minute long TV series. Is the series going to be better? The correct answer is yes. 
the full TV series was in development, I believe, in 2006. Season 1 and 2 were made by the production company called Happy Puppet Productions and Homegirl Productions. Distributed by Buena Vista Television, now goes by the name of Disney ABC Domestic Television. Unfortunately, there's not much info about the production companies I mentioned. Heck, not even their logos appeared in a CLG wiki. Ah well. Then the series aired in January 13th of 2007 with brand new expanded elaborated sets and characters as it follows. Lily, played by Carmen Asbar, a Spanish-speaking water sprite who is kind to nature and really loves to paint. Root, played by Heather Ash, an Earth sprite who is the youngest and shy sprite that can make plants grow just by talking to them. Now the recurring characters are Gwen, Johnny's neighbor friend always try something new. Sage, the old and wise sprite who is always around when a younger sprite needs advice or clueless about a topic. Say more? Well, he was in a short so he's not new. The big eater Schmoll lives in Johnny's backyard. And the small fuzzies do work for the sprites and enjoy hanging out with Johnny. <sighs> Oh man. In each episode, there is a musical number. Many of the songs were written by various notable Broadway composers. Plus, episodes features the song called Heads Up by Gary Atler and Full B. Kruitz, performed by Guess Who. In between the 10 minute segments of an episode, so that's Heads Up. Speaking of musicals, the theme song was written by Steven Schwartz. In October of 2007, Disney MGM Studios presented a live concert of the Playhouse Disney in Concerts as The Little One Travel Time, featuring the Doodle Bops and others. The show was renewed for a second season in the same year in fall at Kaufman Astoria Studios in Queens, New York City. The second season premiered on January 19, 2008, same month as the first season. So impressive! Homegirl Productions dropped out before season 2 for unknown reasons. They were only involved in the first season. In January 4th of 2009, the show was cancelled after two seasons. But why is a show full of fantasy, music, love, and learning from the cute sprites cancelled? I got this info in Muppet Central. I'm not sure if that's the case, but the reason why it was cancelled because John wants to be more focused on his new series in theaters and can't really keep up with his schedules for the sprites much longer. Hey, that's not the last time we see the sprites. They were in 2011 The Muppets and Muppets Most Wanted movie, but only as cameo appearances. Reruns on March 23rd of 2012 on Disney Jr. and was removed later on. Here are a few fun facts about Johnny and the Sprites. The Sprites' names are based on plants and herbs. When you think about the names of the Sprites, it has a deeper meaning for their personality. In the Spanish dub version, Johnny was voiced by Diego Tapa, the host of Playhouse Disney's Latin America. And last but not least, in 2011, the theme song was rewritten and sung by Reliant K Band for Disney Junior Live on Stage. Johnny and the Sprites, again, was a bright and wonderful show for me and everyone else who was a 2000s kid. I even remembered the countdown for the series premiere, or it's probably another show. I've seen it since the shorts opened the door to reveal our own eyes with memorable music and makes us laugh. They were the only songs I remember back then, but the rest are forgettable because it's been a long time. There are some DVDs available on eBay, but since the show is cancelled, it's unlikely the show will have reprints and the unused original prints are very rare. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram in case my YouTube channel turned back into a sloth to fade off to sleep. It's Marie from Pender signing out. Basil, do you want to talk about your crush? Well, not really, no. It's kind of on national TV.
Ooh, huh? Isn't she cute? Wouldn't the you accent's stand up? even cuter, isn't it? Oh. Oh. Do I have an accent? I no, don't no, no, no. <laughs> don't tell her, Johnny. What? what? Okay, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Oh, okay. Oh, my Not God. 